Good morning. Welcome to Grassy Creek Baptist Church. We look forward to worshiping with you today. Look forward to what God's got in store for us. We want to, uh, uh, before we turn loose, share and cast. may not be able to have the uh, opportunity and the ability uh, to get online, use that uh, as an opportunity to gather and be able to do that with one another. I also want to encourage you that you can get in the App Store and Google Play and there is um, our church app and uh, you can uh, continue to follow and get updates. There'll be weekly announcements and there'll be different things as well uh, on, on that church app. So be able to use that. You can follow us on uh, Instagram as well and get notifications uh, that way, uh, GCBC Ministry, and uh, so uh, follow us on Instagram. Uh, continue to remember uh, as we pray, let's continue to remember those who are um, sick and, and in our church family, Brother Johnny Simmons is back in the hospital, pray for him. Uh, continue to remember uh, Brother Hank Moon uh, as uh, he's battling uh, his battle. And uh, continue to remember others as well uh, that uh, need to be lifted up. Continue to pray for our school uh, as they minister to kids and be able to get uh, food to them throughout this um, this virus outbreak. And, and continue to be with them. also want you to uh, uh, pray for health care professionals, law enforcement, everybody that's on the front lines. Uh, pray for them. Pray for their families. Pray that God would just continue to touch uh, and give them a uh, shield around them, and so continue to pray for them. Lift up uh, your your church, lift up everything that's going on around, and fa finding out ways for us to be able to minister and, and be able to be the hands and feet of Jesus while we're going through this trying time. So uh, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then uh, Sherry and Castie are going to come sing, and uh, we'll, we'll join them in worship. I want to encourage you, if you're watching online, sing with them, worship with them, Enjoy having a good time in the Lord together. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you have bestowed. We thank you, Lord, for watching over and caring for us and giving us the privilege, the opportunity to be able to come together and be able to worship you. Lord, even though the pews may be bare, our hearts are full with your presence. And, Lord, we are gathering together together. Uh, at one as one body to be able to worship you and we thank you lord for that we ask that you would touch in everything that's said and done around here today we pray that you'd bless and be with uh, each part of the service i pray lord for sharing cast as they sing bless them give them the, the, the ability to be able to sing as if they were standing in front of you courage and Lord a peace uh, as many decisions have had to be made to uh, go online for those Lord who are in need of resources we pray Lord that you would just uh, make make that available for them so that they can, can can still minister the word Lord we ask that you'd be with those on the front lines fighting this this virus outbreak we pray Lord that you'd keep them safe we pray Lord for their families and their children we ask Lord for those who uh, uh, are in need of medicine groceries we ask that you would just touch them, and, and Lord, I pray that you would use Grassy Creek to be able to minister to them in any way that we can. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would also uh, minister to our hearts today as we uh, see so many struggling. And I pray, Lord, that you would, uh, you would give us, Lord, wisdom, discernment uh, to be able, Lord, to minister to them as you would have, have us to do. I ask, Lord, that you would be with the church. Lord, we miss our people. We miss being able to sit and see each other in the pews. And, Lord, as I'm here today, I'm imagining where each person is sitting and normally sits. And, Lord, I thank you for that picture in my mind. So, 
Lord, even though the pews may be bare physically, in my mind, Lord, I can still see each person at Grassy Creek Baptist Church sitting in their pew this morning. I thank you, Lord, for that. And, Lord, I pray that through all of this, that you would put in us a hunger and a desire and a thirst to gather in your church. Lord, I know that Satan wants to use this to discourage and to get people to where they're so distracted with everything else that, Lord, ultimately they forget about gathering in your house to worship you. But, Lord, I pray that what he intends to use for evil purposes, Lord, that you would use to put a hunger and a thirst in us to come together when the time comes again. And, Lord, I, I'm not saying if we are able to, but, Lord, when we are able to. I, I'm satisfied that you are going to uh, get us through this because, Lord, so far in our days and in our lives, you've gotten us through the hardest times we've ever seen. And that's why we're here today. And so, Lord, I know you're going to get us through this, and we will be victorious. I'm reminded that your word teaches us we're more than conquerors, that the victory is ours. And, Lord, we just thank you for that. I pray that you would help us, that you would encourage us uh, to be back into your house when the time is right. We thank you, Lord, for all you do. In Jesus' name we do pray. Though you've been broken, your innocence stolen, I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your rest, so west, your ass, so west. I will send down an army find you in the middle of the darkest night it's true I will rescue you there is no distance that cannot be covered over and over you're not defenseless I'll be your shelter, I'll be your armor. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your rest, oh, where's your rest, oh, where's? I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night it's true i will rescue you i will never stop marching to reach you in the middle of the hardest but it's true I will rescue you. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear you whisper you have nothing there. I will send down an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night it's true i will rescue you i will never stop marching to reach you in the middle
hidden glory in creation now revealed in you our christ what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is the name of jesus christ my king what a beautiful name it is nothing compares to this what a beautiful name it is the name of jesus you didn't want heaven without us so jesus you Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus, you have no rival, you have no equal, now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a powerful name it is nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a name it is the name Titus chapter number 2, Titus chapter number 2, we're going to begin reading in verse number 11, 
Titus chapter 2, verse number 11. Last week when Pastor Gene was preaching, um, I noticed in my Bible that I had some notes on this these verses. And as I did that, God began to deal with my heart that this morning would be a good time to look at these verses. Now, I want to say, in these days, we're all looking for something. I was at the store yesterday. People were looking for all kinds of things. We've laughed, but paper towels. be able to get us through these trying times. And I want to say to you, you can stockpile all the groceries you want and still be hungry. You can have all of the medicine that needs to be had and still be sickly. You can have the best advice and strategies and still be missing. There's only one place to turn for hope. And that is to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so I want to read, beginning in verse number 11, I'm going to read down through verse number 15. And I want to preach this morning, looking for that blessed hope. For the grace of God, verse 11, that of bring us salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope. Now, I want you to notice it didn't say looking for a blessed hope. But there is a definitive word there, looking for that blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort, rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Now Paul was writing to Titus, who was a young minister. And Paul had used Titus in multiple ways and in multiple areas to be able to, if you will, uh, be sent out to take care of some issues. And now he was writing a personal letter to Titus, encouraging him. When you read the book of Titus, you find that there are qualifications for elders, and uh, he gives some exhortment to um, older men and older women to uh, train up the younger generation and teach them um, what to do and, and how to be. I, I'm glad, and I know that this is maybe foolish in these days, but uh, I'm glad that my wife was able to learn how to cook some good old-fashioned meals. We had fried pork chops and cream-style corn last night at our house to eat, and I'm glad that uh, there was some passing on of some things. Well, not just physical, not just social, but there needs to be a passing on of a, a, a spiritual matter. Uh, Even though we live in dark days, doubtful times, worrisome times, I'm here to tell you this morning that we are not in a gloom and doom time. We are in a time where Jesus is going to shine forth brighter than He's ever shined. The church will be able to be standing up and shining. grace, verse number 11. He talks about the effects of grace and what grace does. He and te- I mean, we talk about grace being God's unmerited favor, and we know that grace is sufficient for us, and we know, but grace works in us 
to get the holiness and righteousness of God that is put in us to come out of us in daily living. And I want to deal with that just in a few moments. Then he talks about hope. So we've got grace. We've got hope. Uh, in verse number 13, he talks about, I, I want to say he talks about love. He talks about redemption. He talks about the purifying work of God. And then he talks about the work of his people, that we ought to be zealous of good works. And then he tells T Titus in verse 15, These things speak, exhort, rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. What he's saying there is he said, Teach this because you have got the authority, the full, full authority to urge people and encourage people. Now, I, I know this morning we're used to having inside this building anywhere from 170 to 190 people. And I know this morning you may be thinking, how's he preaching? In my mind, you're still sitting here. In my mind, you're still right there where you're supposed to be. And I must take my responsibility to urge you and encourage you and exhort you and even to rebuke some, if you will, this morning. Because I know that in my own heart, I've needed to rebuke myself because of a lack of faith and letting fear creep in and beginning to wonder how we're going to make, through the, make it through this. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something that uh, there is no place for fear in the faith of faith with God. If there is no place to be doubting if you believe in who He really is. I, I've said this to several this week, but God's not sitting in heaven wringing His hands saying, what am I going to do about all of this that's happening? Uh, he's not worried about what the next step's going to be. Every test comes back positive. Every, every uh, city that begins to put in more restrictions, it's just an opportunity for him to show how big and how great of a God he is. And we have to believe that. And so as we look today in these verses, I want to speak to you about the word grace. Grace means the unmerited favor of God. But I want to say to you, as it says here in verse 11, for the grace of God that bringeth, Salvation. That word bringeth salvation means it brings deliverance. It brings safety. Uh, and so grace brings that to us. And I'm glad today that grace saves. Amen. If you're watching online, if you are... Uh to uh, cause him to want to. There's nothing we can do to earn grace. There's nothing we can do to say, I deserve grace. It's because he loves you, he loves me, and he is pouring out grace upon us. And I'm here to say today, hallelujah, grace brings salvation. Not only does grace save, but I want to say grace also sanctifies. And I believe that's the portion that, that Ty Paul was telling to young Titus here is that this grace that brings salvation, that's what he says, brings salvation to all men, hath appeared to all men, has become visible and become known. Now, grace not only saves, I want to bog down right here for just a minute, but, but when it says that it's appeared, I want to ask you something. You go to Walmart, you go to Ingalls, you go to the Dollar General, you go wherever you're going to buy groceries. Do you walk around like you're not saved and there's no hope in Jesus? Do you walk around fretting and worrying? Because the grace of God which brings salvation hath appeared to all men. You and I are to shine that light. Yes, things are, things are wearisome and worrisome. Yes, we wonder what and how and all of these questions. But let me tell you at the end of the day, at the end of the day, here is the truth. Is that there's more for us than there is against us. There is a greater hope in Jesus than there is in anything else. And listen, I'm not being morbid. I'm not trying to be doom and gloom. But we're all going to we're all going to leave this world one way or the other. And the truth is, we never know how we're going to leave. But I want to ask you something. You can know who you're going to leave with. You're either going to leave with Jesus. Or you're going to leave without Him. You're going to say, breathe out your last breath with Him and inhale your first breath in His presence. Can you imagine breathing out here in this sin-cursed, nasty, 
world and breathing in and being able to smell the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the fragrance of the one who died for you and be able to smell him as you open up your eyes in paradise. Glory, what a hope we have in him. Grace saves, but also grace sanctifies. The idea of sanctification is we're growing, we're maturing, we're moving forward. In verse number 2, it says that teaching us, that word teaching is the like a training up a child to educate or to instruct them. What are we doing in these days? What is grace doing in us? I, I believe I believe this. I, I believe that the effects of this is God's grace begins to work in us and through us that we're going to either fall more in love with Him and we're going to miss church and... I don't want that. Listen, I, I'm telling you, I make a conscious effort every day not to buy into this fear factor of what's going on. I, I reject it, to deny it. I, I want my faith to shine greater than my fears. Do I have worries? Do I have concerns? Do I have things? Yes, but I'm not going to panic. When I feel that panic and anxiety start building up, I'm going to hit my knees and turn my eyes towards the Lord and pray and, and seek His face in all of this. But he was saying here in these, in these words, to deny it means to just reject it. Now notice he names some things. Denying ungodliness. That word ungodly means a lack of reverence to God. You start hoarding up stuff. I know I'm speaking out, but let's just let's look past the coronavirus. You start doing things that don't reverence God. And you claim to be a Christian, you can't have those two things in the same place. As the Bible teaches us, bitter water and sweet water can't come from the same fountain. And so what grace does is it teaches us to deny some things that don't show reverence and respect for God. In the days in which we are living in now, that, that reverence and that respect lets us know that He's still in control. Have you ever thought about this just as... Just as what happened to Job had to be filtered through the okay of, our, of God the Father. This had to be filtered through his okay. And so he's not scrambling to try to fit. He already knows how we're going to come out on the other side of, the, of this. He already knows how everything's going to work out. And praise to his name, he he's already knows exactly what's happening. And so you and I, as we go through this and as we go through all of these days ahead, we can, we can give him respect and honor and know that he's still in control. <laughs> I mean, around my house, there was a guy asked me this past week, he said, what are you going to do Saturday? I said, well, i got some things I need to do around my place. He said, aren't you afraid? Afraid of what? I'm afraid of getting caught up in my briar thicket. Where I was working yesterday evening, I was afraid of getting bogged down in the mud and losing my rubber boots. I, I might have been afraid of stepping on a nail as I was tearing that old barn apart this past weekend. Let me tell you something. I know no matter what's going on around me, God's still in control. And so I'm not going to buy into the ungodliness of doubting His ability, doubting His capability, and doubting His willingness. Because he's been the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. In him is no shadow of turning. And that you and I don't need to buy in to all of this stuff where Satan's trying to tell us he don't care. He's just going to let this happen. Listen, I still believe that if his people, which are called by his name, will humble themselves and pray and seek his face and turn from their wicked ways, he will hear from heaven and will heal their land. Why? He made that promise. He'll keep that promise because he's always faithful. The faithfulness of God has never changed. And so Paul was telling Titus, listen, the grace that is being a, that brought salvation is now teaching, instructing, and giving men the, the, the knowledge of knowing to deny, reject ungodliness and worldly lusts. Things that are desires that are corrupt and corrupt us. <laughs> There's too many people put too much faith in the stock market 
put too much faith in the supermarket and put too much faith in, in what's going on in the sports market. And now, supermarket shelves are, are closed, stock market's going down, and there is no sports, which I miss. My way of, my way of kind of settling down on Sunday is watching an old boring football game or an old baseball game. Usually I don't make it past three innings in a baseball game, and I don't make it past the first quarter of a football game, and then I'm out, and I miss that. But here's what I'm trying to say to you today. We, those lusts, those things that we are lusting after, desiring after, that now we may find ourselves unable to be able to uh, indulge in, he said we need to deny those things, turn away from those things. We need to be at a place where we disavow from those. Now notice what he said. He said, teaching us denying ungodly lust or ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live. The word live means to have an act. He said that uh, since we were going to be streaming, I might be sh- not as long-winded. Negative, Ghost Rider. I'm preaching just like you're right here in these pews. Somebody said we need to uh, minimize our gatherings to 35, 45 minutes. Well... Uh, you know, we're online. We're not gathered together in one place uh, in this building. But here's what I want to say to you this morning is that when you lay down after a while, whether it's for a nap or whether it's tonight when it's time to go to bed, you can lay your head down and rest in the blessed hope of Jesus Christ. We have a resting hope. We have a rejoicing hope. Romans 12, 12 tells us that we can rejoicing in hope and that we can rejoice in it. Romans 15, 13 is a joy and a peace-giving hope. That we have. Hebrews 6 19, it is an anchoring hope for a hope that is an anchor for our souls. Uh, Hebrews 7 19, it's a better hope because of a better hope that was set before, or a better hope that was in front that He gave to us. And 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3, it's a lively hope. I'm glad that our hope is alive, well, and going. It's not something we have to quit. It's not something we have to question. It's not something that we have to be afraid of. But our hope is great. Paul said it is a blessed hope and we ought to be looking for it, confident in it, and waiting patiently for it. Now, ultimately, I want to say to you here, we have hope that the cross saves us and that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And we believe that. That's our hope. My hope is in the cross. My hope is that I I was thinking just yesterday, above all things and above more sickness and situations that befall us, I'm glad today to know that my sin has been nailed to the cross of Calvary and it is well with my soul because my sin, not the part but the whole, was nailed to that cross with him he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God and so my hope is in the cross my sin is taken care of my hope is in an empty tomb I I want to say to you this morning that the angel rolled the stone away not to let him out but to let us in That's why they said, why seek ye the living among the dead? He's not here. He's alive. I want to tell you something. Death will be defeated. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Bible teaches us that the last enemy to be defeated is death. As a matter of fact, you know these verses, verse 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, this mortal shall have put on immortality. Hallelujah! Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O grave, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, the strength of sin, the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and move always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This is not going to be the end of it all, but it will be the beginning of eternity when we leave this world. My hope is in an empty tomb today. But I want to tell you, my hope doesn't end at a tomb because there's coming a day when all of a sudden we're going to hear a voice like unto what we've never, it's going to be so loud, it's going to wake up the dead. A vault and six foot of dirt's not going to be able to quieten it. The depths of the ocean's not going to be able to silence it. 
But our Lord Jesus Christ is going to step out on a cloud of glory one of these days and say, come up hither. And in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we're going to be reunited with our loved ones who have gone on to be with the Lord. And we're going to be in, caught up together with the Lord in the air. Hallelujah. What a hope. I, I want to say to you, we have a blessed hope today. A blessed Are you looking at that hope? By His stripes we are healed, Isaiah 53. Through the empty tomb, death just, enter, just ushers us. It's just a vehicle to go from death unto life. And there's coming a day where that blessed hope of His return, and we get to be with Him forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. What a hope. As we think about our hope today, it says that we're also looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of, our, of, our, of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That word appearing means the manifestation. Faith's going to become sight. Listen, he's saying looking for that blessed hope. Now we have a blessed hope, but notice what the Bible says, and the glorious appearing. The word glorious means uh, something that's going to evoke praise and worship and honor. And so it's a beautiful sight. It's a glorious sight. So he's saying we've got that blessed hope and, and we're looking for that glorious appearing manifestation of God the Father and God the Son. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to Him today as we look for that blessed hope. Now notice who gave himself for us. Talking about Christ. The word gave means to deliver, to give over, to commit himself for us. That he might redeem us. The word redemption, the redeem means to pay a ransom. To release by the payment of a ransom. So he paid for you and I. He paid for what he's got in the church. He's paid for. I want to ask you this morning, is he getting all he paid for? Is he getting all he paid for? He paid for everything. He ought to get everything. You go and buy a vehicle, if they only give you half the car, you're not going to be satisfied with that. You go and you buy a meal, you want the whole thing. When Gracie was little, we'd give her a Reese cup or give her something to eat, and she'd look at it wide-eyed, the whole thing. She'd say, whole shame? Yeah, you can have the whole thing. God wants the whole thing from me and you. He paid for it. He ransomed it. He redeemed it. He said that he might redeem us from all trespasses and transgression. The word iniquity. He redeemed us from all of that. And to purify unto himself. The word purify means to cleanse or to purge unto himself. Now here's the word. A peculiar people zealous of good works. The word peculiar means something beyond usual. You go out and about in this world today, do people look at you and do they see that you've got a hope, a blessed hope? Or do they see that all of a sudden you're gripped with fear? As we go through these days, are we living in a place where we have denied things that the world is accepting and that we are all of a sudden living in a blessed hope where we can go forward and be more of a light shining in these dark times. The word peculiar in our culture means a little odd. Well, you're peculiar. Well, God wants us to be different from the world. He wants us to be peculiar when compared to what's going on in the culture around us. Instead of panicking people, he wants praying people. Instead of worrying people, he wants worshiping people. Instead of fearful people, he wants faithful people. Instead of hoarding people, he wants cheerful givers. What? That's peculiar in these days. I, I seen a picture the other day where there was some people that had... Uh, a table set at the end of their driveway and there was wipes and there was toilet paper and there was potatoes and there were different things and there was a sign taped to the front of it, take what you need. Here we are in this day where people are selfish and self-centered and they're, they're scared to death and the church ought to be standing up and saying, 
We don't have to be afraid because Jesus is still on our side. Jesus is still in control. And we want to love on you and care for you. I I was reading, uh, I believe it was Martin Luther uh, that was talking about the Black Plague and when it had hit uh, around. and, And it was said that the Christians were the ones who stood up and were willing to treat people with the plague and were willing to die because of the plague in order to nurse others to hell. I had a dear friend of mine, and he's probably maybe watching sometime online. I don't know, but he was—he's a Vietnam veteran, and he said when he was in Vietnam, he began to pray, "Lord, if somebody's got to die in a group of my men, let it be me, because I know you. And if I take my last breath here, oh, what love and what peculiarity it is for you to say, if somebody's got to go, let it be me, because I know where I'm going." And let my life be an example to others. Paul told Titus, Oh, looking for teaching people, looking for that in blessed hope, living soberly, living in a way. And then he says, Because he has purified for himself a peculiar people. Listen to this. Zealous for good works. Zealous means to burn with zeal. To do things that are the gods. Not, not a desire to do them so that we can earn salvation, but because we are saved, we want to do it. Because we are washed in the blood, we want to do it. Wouldn't it be something in these days if all of a sudden we found ourselves zealous to shine our lights? I was talking to some pastors Friday morning, and I said, I'm afraid that we've turned our steeples into bushels and we're hiding their light on the inside and God said okay can't do that anymore you're going to have to shine your light out there use different avenues and do, use different ways what, what if we all of a sudden in all of this decided man I want to get excited to do something for Jesus got a text from a pastor last night what an exciting time to live and be able to preach the gospel what an attitude adjustment What an exciting time to be able to say, you know why I'm not scared? It's because I know the man, Jesus. (laughs) You know why I'm not worried? I just left the throne room. King says it's going to be all right. Hallelujah to his name. You know why I'm not worried? Because I've spent some time worshiping him this morning as I got up before daylight. And I sat down and I laid the Bible in my lap. I, I just got overcome with the fact that I didn't have to do it in secret. I didn't have to hide, but that in the middle of all of this, in the middle of all the pandemic that's going around in our world today, I could still lay God's Word openly in my lap, and I just began to look like He was sitting on the other side of the couch and began to talk to Him and began to just communicate with Him, and all of a sudden it just became so real. The world may have changed, but He's still the same. My relationships with you may have had to be socially distant, but I'm telling you, he sat down in the living room at 642 Barney McKinney Road and said, Nathan Silver, I want you to preach just like there was 9,000 people watching you because I'm still going to be with you. I'm still going to encourage you. I'm still going to use you. I just need you to be a vessel to where I can speak through you. I'm telling you, there was something about it this morning and it got me excited. I was walking around outside and and took the dog and put her up and and all of this stuff and, and, and I mean... I, I, I was talking. I started preaching this message to that German Shepherd dog. Amen. I don't know if God's going to save a dog, but if He did, Amen. I, I'm going to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. And can I say He did save an old Gentile dog named Nathan Silver, April the twenty eighth, nineteen and eighty eight. I didn't know what it got a hold of me, but I'm glad right now it still got a hold of me. And there ain't nothing in this world going to be able to take me out of His hand. Glory. Let's be zealous for good work. Verse 15, and then we're done. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. In these days, the world around us needs to know that we've got a hope. That there's grace that's sufficient, sanctifies, satisfies, sustains. That can be poured out on us. And we can look... For that happy hope that we have, that confident expectation and waiting for that hope that we have and 
It's a lively hope, a resting hope, a rejoicing hope, a hope that gives joy and peace, anchors us in the middle of the storm. Thank God for the hope we have in Him. You want to ask you this morning, are you today looking for that hope? What are you looking for today? What, what, are, you, what are you looking towards for assurance? I want to tell you something, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. You and I today can only have that assurance, that hope, that confidence in Him. In Him. What are you looking for today? Let me ask you today, church, what are you working for? What are you working for? What is the most, what are you the most zealous for? What do you burn? I, I mean, listen, I, I, I got in a conversation with a fellow online this past week, and uh, he's a turkey hunter, and I'm a turkey hunter, and I'm looking forward to that. To that Saturday when turkey season opens and being I was standing out there this morning on my back porch when the crows went to hollering. I walked outside to hear if I could see a if I could hear a, a turkey gobbling anywhere close by. And I think they were like me when they stuck their head out the door this morning. They went, Woo, it was, wasn't expecting that. And they shut the door real quick and was quiet. But but I, I mean, what are you zealous for? What do you have zeal for? What do you have excitement for? And what are you working for? I'm telling you today, we've got a hope in him. A hope that's a blessed hope that gets us through. And I want to encourage you today. Don't give in. Don't give up. Keep in the fight. Don't give out. Keep on keeping on. Because I promise you, it's better. It's better farther on. As we travel through this desert. Storms beset us by the way, but beyond the river Jordan lies a field of endless day. Farther on, still go farther, count the milestones one by one. Jesus will forsake us never. It is better farther on. Oh, my brother, are you weary of the roughness of the way? Does your strength begin to fail you? And your vigor to decay. Farther on, still go farther. Count the milestones one by one. Jesus will forsake you never. It is better farther on. Let's look for that blessed hope today. As we move forward with Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father we thank you for the day that you have given to us. And Lord thank you that as this day dawned. We still had a hope. That's an anchor for our soul. As this day moves forward. We've still got grace. To instruct us and help us. We've still got a life to live soberly. Righteously. And godly. And Lord thank you that we've got a work to do. And Lord as we are looking for that blessed hope. Let us know. As we count the milestones. It will be better. Farther on. In Christ's name. Amen. want to encourage you to tune in on Wednesday. We'll be going uh, live again. And uh, Pastor Gene will bring the message to us on Wednesday night. Look forward to being there. Continue to pray for one another. Love on your neighbors. And uh, hallelujah to his name. Amen.